Yo, what's that word, y'all? What's the word? How y'all doing? How everybody doing this morning? Hey, I want to get it, people. Another, let's give them another 60 seconds to pop on here. Let's see who we got in the chat, man. Who we got in the chat. Good morning, AZ King. Good morning. Made Media, what's that word, man? How you doing? Y'all heard my girl Sativa. Welcome to the What's the Word podcast. Please hit the like button when you come in. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and get comfortable and enjoy the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before you, man, dude, it must be a glitch in the matrix. Somebody, I think somebody hacked my damn account this morning, bro. Been a lot of weird shit going on. A lot of weird shit. All right, we closing in on that third, what is it? We closing in on that 30 second mark. We about to get to work, you all. We about to get to work. Um, I want to close out this Idaho 4 saga. This will be the last live stream. We speak about this until an arrest will be made. But today, you all, we got to talk about Jack. Um, we have to talk about, excuse me one second. Let me fix this real quick. Uh, settings. Let me see this virtual background. All right, we gonna just X that. So I feel like I'm lagging. I know y'all. That background got me. It got the. It got the show lagging. It does bad. It's not good for the production. Um, let's get to it. One hundred. All right, we'll get straight to it. Jack, I reanalyzed this food truck footage. And I've been thinking about this case. I've been thinking about it for the past week. Ever since you guys put it on my table, I've been thinking about it. I got a lot of questions about this Jack guy. And I also, um, I got, you know what? We just going to get straight to it. CB was in Idaho, November 14. Shit. Man, stop it. All right, stop it. All right, y'all. That's so Jack. Let's talk, Jack. Let me, uh, I want to pull this up. I grabbed, um, we got to go over the video analysis of this. So I want to go over the video footage real quick. But look, we're going to go over the footage. Let me just talk. I'm going to talk for a minute. I'm going to talk for a minute. Mr. Jack, Jack was an initial suspect. And Jack got cleared instantly. You got a Jack D and you got a Jack S. Seriously, really bad case. Hope it goes solved ASAP. You want to know something? The case is only, it happened November 13th, and the uh, Idaho Police Department said that they are comfortable that the case will be solved. I feel like we, we have seen this, this food truck footage, and I know for a fact that this food truck footage is hindering the investigation. It definitely hindered the investigation. Um, Kaylee's father, let me pull up this image of this young lady. The, her father, he means well, but he's mourning right now. Uh, what is this young lady? Kaylee, Kaylee, Kaylee. Kaylee Convales his father. He means well, but him, him and his family, they have, they're interfering with the investigation. They're definitely interfering with the investigation because they're being too loud, they're being too boisterous, and they're being too emotional, and they're scaring off the killer. Um, I've been watching this case, you all. I can, it's, it's a, honestly, you all, we all can relate to this. If you're in the inner city, we all can relate to this. This small town has not seen a murder in seven years. A lot of these people have never even witnessed a murder. So this entire town is shocked, is traumatized, is under siege. You know, they've never witnessed anything like this. Similar to the inner cities. And this goes to everybody because it's like at least seven murders in Chicago every single day. So yes, they witnessed one. But imagine how shocked they are about that one and how numb majority of the major cities have gotten to murder, you know, but we relive this trauma daily and daily and daily. A lot of people do, you all. So, you know, my heart goes out to the Idaho 4. My heart goes out to the, to the to Moscow. It really does. My heart goes out to Moscow. So, salute to CB for the content. Salute to you, Ms. Jade. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Mr. Jack, let me pull up a picture of Jack. Let me see. Hold on. 
This guy's name is Jack. Hold on, there we go. Let me pull this up real quick. All right, get the image of this guy. Okay. Jock, 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 jock. Where are you, Jack? All right. We got to, I want to go, we got to, uh, we got to differentiate the Jacks. We got to differentiate the Jacks. Because there's two, it's two Jacks, you all. It's two Jacks. And we got to make sure we're giving the right Jack and not the wrong Jack. Let me show you all this real quick. Hold on. Okay. Kaylee and Maddie left the bar around 145. They got home around 150. And then they called Jack S. Jack S is actually Kaylee's ex-boyfriend. She called him seven times. He didn't pick up the phone. So this is Jack S, the ex-boyfriend. A lot of people were accusing, and a lot of people are still accusing Jack S of murdering Kaylee because they saying Kaylee was about to leave, graduate. They broke up. Um, they said that he was disgruntled and he wanted to murder the young lady. I'm here to tell you guys, her ex-boyfriend did not murder those four people. The ex-boyfriend didn't care that Kaylee was leaving. He probably was sad, but it wasn't like it was sweat off his back. You get what I'm saying? Like, he was going to be all right. She was more so in love with Jack than Jack was more so in love with her. That's why she was calling him six or seven times. He didn't even pick up the phone, y'all. He was busy doing some other stuff at one in the morning, wherever that was. You know what I'm saying? He a man. That's his business. However, you guys, we have to concentrate on John Jack Showalter. And the reason why we have to concentrate on John Jack Showalter is due to the fact that based off of all of the video footage, all of the eyewitnesses account and everybody who stepped forward and given tips, this is the only guy that everybody on social media is like, what's to this guy? What's to this, what's to this Jack, this John Jack Showalter guy? Because he's a he's a creep. Now you all, before we play the video, I want to let you guys know something about John Jack Showalter. John Jack Showalter was kicked out of the out of the bar that night for being creepy with women. John Jack Showalter was actually kicked out of his fraternity for unknown reasons. John Jack Showalter, in my humble opinion, you guys. John Jack Showalker seemed as though he wanted to kill. John Jack Showalker seemed as though he had a lust for blood. John Jack Showalter, you guys, was a hunter. John Jack Showalker got tired of hunting animals and wanted to hunt a different type of prey. I've been around killers. I've been around civilians. I've been around nerds. I've been around gangsters. One thing I know about watching this video with John Jack Showalker is that that night John Jack Showalker was hunting, but it wasn't an animal. On the night of November 13th, around 1.45, while he was stalking these young ladies out behind his food truck, John Jack Showalter was stalking out and hunting these two young ladies. And as we will show you guys in the video, they knew something was wrong with them. That's why they kept saying, what the heck is to this guy? Get this creepy ass dude away from me. They left. Kaylee and Maddie left the taco truck. They went home. They shortly died around three in the morning. I'll give, you know what? I'll give you guys the timeline. I know I know a lot of people want the timelines. I'll give you guys the timelines because people really love these timelines. Look. All right. Saturday, Saturday, November 12, 2022, Ethan and Zana, they attended a frat party from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. By 1.45, they were back at their home. All right. Now, Ethan, let me pull this picture up because I want to get the names with the faces. Ethan Chaplin and Lana Canoodle were on the second floor. All right. 
So around 1.45, they were back at the house. They went to sleep. From 10 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., you had Kaylee and you had Maddie. They went to the bar. They went to the club. Around 1.30, we see them at the taco truck. Everybody was home at 1.45. Kaylee got home at 1.45. Maddie got home at 1.45. Ethan and Zana were all home by 1.45. Okay? Now, from um, 2.26 to 246 six calls were placed to jack not jack showwalker but jack the ex-boyfriend six missed calls were placed kaylee called him six times kaylee she what she had she wanted the booty call they had college that's just what they do jack didn't pick up the phone so when jack didn't pick up the phone maddie called him twice he didn't pick up the phone for maddie kaylee called him once again he didn't she didn't pick up the phone that was around 246. That's why people are believing that the murder occurred between 3 a.m. 3 a.m. to 4 in the morning because the bodies were not discovered until noon the next day by the two other people living in the house. They were on the first floor. A lot of people are saying, hey, why didn't why didn't anybody hear this crime? Four people got stabbed. No one heard any noises, nothing or anything like that. Look, you all. The first floor, I'm going to send you, I'm going to pull up a picture of the house. I'll pull up a picture of the house. Idaho is a very mountainous type of type of place. You know, it's, just, it's nothing but mountains, nat natural, natural land and wildlife. This is what we're seeing. This looks like the first floor to us, city people. But this is not the first floor, you all. This is not the first floor. This is actually the second floor. So the killer, who I think is John Jack Showalter, walk in the second floor okay this is why ethan and zana got killed first and then after he went to the second floor he didn't go to the first floor he went straight to the third floor and when he went to the third floor maddie and kaylee were sleeping in the same bedroom together and he stabbed them both but kaylee's father said that Kaylee's stab wounds or Kaylee's injuries were extremely different from Madison's injuries. All right. Ethan Chapman and Zana Canoodle were casualties because they just happened to be on the second floor where the killer crept in the house at. It's a sliding, it's a sliding door. I'm gonna see if I can pull up this sliding door. Idaho for a sliding door. We'll pull it up. It's a sliding door that he went through. Uh, I uh, I know people who've been keeping up with this case. You guys probably already know. A lot of people on my channel, um, they don't know. You know, they don't. They don't know. I'm and I'm. This is just now, honestly, starting to all make sense to me. Let me pull up this uh, sliding door for you guys. I'm gonna pull up this sliding door for you guys real quick. Hold on. Um, let me see. Share. This is the door he crept in at. This is the sliding door, you all. Hold on, let me share this. He went through this door. This is the door on the second floor. He slid that door open. Why the door wasn't locked, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, you know, we do know why the door was locked. The door was unlocked because there hasn't been a murder in that town for over seven years, you all. So a lot of people going around saying, well, why didn't they lock the doors? Why didn't they lock the doors? They didn't have to lock the doors. Nobody dies in this place. You know, nobody dies in this place. So he crept through the sliding door and um, he murdered these two people. And then he went upstairs and he finished the job. He not, not once did he go to the first floor. He didn't even bother with the first floor. And I got a feeling he didn't bother with the first floor because nobody came out. This crime, you all, reminds me a lot of Ted Bundy. You know, this crime reminds me a lot of Ted Bundy. I was talking to one of my moms earlier, and she was saying it has to be another person. It has to be another person because who just goes in there and kills four people? Like, how can you just do that on your own? And I, I mean, Ted Bundy did it on his own. Ted Bundy did it on his own. But I'm going to tell you guys, I got I got legitimate reasons as to why I truly believe. I truly, truly believe 
that Jack did this. Not only just from non, uh, from body languages. Look at all his DNA on here. Look at all his DNA. We're going to talk about the DNA evidence as well, too. We're going to talk about the DNA evidence as well, too. Hold on. Let me share this with you guys real quick. I want to share this. This is um, this is footage, a little bit of footage from the crime scene. This is outside. There was so much blood inside the house, you guys. Blood is literally oozing from the inside of the house to the outside of the house. He stabbed four people. He stabbed four people. And it wasn't with a butcher knife, you all. It wasn't with a butter knife. It wasn't with like any kitchen utensils. He stabbed these people with a military grade hunting knife. And these knives are meant to hunt and kill people. This is why he was able to do it so quickly and so swiftly. With little to no struggle. Right. Yet at the same time, they were drinking alcohol that evening. Uh, Ted didn't mask. Cool, did he? I thought he did the individually. No, Ted, Ted Bundy killed a lot of people. But if you notice, Ted Bundy went into a, um, a college town. And he murdered like four college girls. And these are college students, you all. All of these people are young people. All of them are under the ages of 22. None of them are over 21, you all. They're all college students. I mean, no matter what race you are, a lot of us have been to college. A lot of us have been in those dorm rooms. We've been in those parties. We know the college life, y'all. It's a worry-free environment. I mean, the only thing you should be worried about in college is midterms, finals, and not getting pregnant or not having a child. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, man. But unfortunately, now these people got to worry about this killer. So this is why people believe. I'm a bad guy. Excuse me. I, I went off on a tangent. Like I said, Ethan and Zana was at a party from 8, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. They, they were by the house. They were at home by 145. They left that Friday house at 9 p.m. We don't know where they were from 9 p.m. to 1.45 in the morning. We do not know where they were. You know what I'm saying? That's the time gap that they have. However, the time gap with Kaylee and Madison is there is no time gap. They were at the bar from 10 p.m. to 1.30 in the morning. They stopped to get tacos. They were at home no later than 1.45. Kaylee called Jack, her ex-boyfriend, six times from 2.26 to 2.46. He didn't pick up the phone, so Madison called him twice. Kaylee called him again. They went in the bed. They slept. Kaylee woke up, witnessing her friend getting stabbed. She put up a fight. She eventually died. That's what happened, okay? Yeah, that's why they saying and shaking my head. College were my exact, seriously, you are. And this is honestly, I think, I know for a fact. This is why I'm so, like, in, entrenched with this case. Because college was some of the best years of my life, y'all. It's like that time when you 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 don't really know about racism. You don't really care about it. You find yourself. You you learn new people. You got all types of friends from all different types of walk of life. You know, college is college was some of my best years. Um, and unfortunately for these young people who are attending this college, you know, some of their best years are now traumatized. They don't even want to go to school anymore. You are. They don't even want to go to school anymore because they're scared that they're going to get murdered. All right, we're 20 minutes in. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to play. We got to reanalyze this video. Now, I'm going to play several different footages of uh, of the food. I'm going to play two video surveillance footage footages of the food truck because both of them are very, very important. Um, truth and transparency. Salute to her. I want y'all to go support her. She did a, this was a live stream. Which she analyzed the food truck. Let me see. Yup. Yeah. It's actually a seven minute video. I think this is a seven minute video. Let's react to this. Cause she had, she analyzed the food truck to a T, y'all. So we have 76 likes. We need 100. Hey, facts for real, for real. Y'all heard AZ King. We closing in on that 20 minute mark. I literally forgot to hit the like button to promote the like button. Smash the like button. Let's get this video out in the algorithm, y'all. Let's get it out in the algorithm. Let's get these notifications out. So salute to, salute to the 70 people who liked it. Let's get three more likes in this building. Let's get this thing up to... Let's get it up to 100. Keep it 100 with your boy. Keith. And let's, let's get it up to 100. Where the heck is this food truck? You know what? Before, while, while I look for this food truck video, I'm going to tell y'all. Because everybody like timestamps and everybody like dates. Let's look at 
potentially, this is the potential escape route that Jack could have took back home to his parents' house. All right. So, and this is very jackass is grass, y'all. Trust me, I the stuff I'm gonna tell y'all as soon as we get to 100 likes, the re I'm gonna tell y'all why jackass is grass. Trust me, I've analyzed this for three days. Uh, this case ain't rocket science. Everybody know what's going on. That small town is grieving, grieving, so they know what's going on. As soon as we get this up to 100 likes, I just I'm gonna just flat out tell y'all why jackass going to jail. All right, so salute to truth and transparency. I'm going to share this video because this. These are the timelines. It's very important to go over the timelines. And then once we go over that, wait a minute, POI. The total distance from 1122 King Road to John Jack's parents, five hours, 43 minutes. 297 miles but these two locations are in different time zones authorities have said that the murders occurred after 3 a.m but before 4 a.m so they've been saying 3 a.m to 4 a.m is when the murders occurred where are they getting this information from why do they believe that the murders happened between 3 and 4 a.m If they are correct, the killer left at 4 a.m. from 1122 King Road, all bloody. What Truth and Transparency believes is in camo gear to make it seem like animal blood if stopped by authorities while driving. Again, this is part of TNT's investigation as to what they were wearing and how to explain it to others if seen. Again, hunting gear. If the person of interest is John Jack Showalter, and if he fled to his parents, here is the quickest route. Two hundred ninety-seven miles, five hours and forty-three minutes. So leaving Moscow, Idaho, would mean that you are leaving at four a.m. West Coast Pacific time zone. So when you arrive, actually in Boise, Idaho, you would actually add an hour because they are in mountain time zone. So without a stop, John Jack would arrive at 10.43 a.m. But if you stop, which I believe you would have to unless he had a full tank of gas, he would arrive around 11 a.m. Boise, Idaho time. Again, Moscow would have been 10 a.m. Again, because you have to add that extra hour because of the time change. But also I'm adding on 15 minutes because of stopping for gas. Now, let's take a look at the possible stops along the way and what time these gas stations in each of these areas should be checking their cameras and also their credit card receipts. Again, so please share this information and get this out to gas station clerks. Okay, again, attention all gas stations that would be in the following areas. And this is the quickest path from Moscow to Boise, the outskirts where his parents' residence is. Hey, white people gonna get to the bottom. White people will get to the bottom of a crime. This young lady has literally sat here and analyzed the distance between Moscow and Boise. It's a five hour distance. Not only did she calculate the distance, she found each and every gas station and rest stop so they can review the footages and find this young man. Now, this is critical to me due to the fact that um, the, the scene, the crime scene was so gruesome, you all, that the police chief cried. Like he broke down during a press conference. He said, I know this is my job, but I got daughters. I'm a human being. Like he's seen three three young girls dead and a young man with a dead, all with a throat slit. Like the crime scene was violent. It was gruesome and it was bloody. 
So if that crime scene was that violent, it was that gruesome, and it was that bloody, Jack John Showalker allegedly had to be literally drenched in blood. The only way for Jack to get away with this is to say, hey, I just came from a hunting trip. I'm a hunter. I just got done gutting out a deer. So if they analyze the footage and they notice that blood is on his camouflage hoodie or on his green hoodie, they're going to bring him in for questioning you guys. Now, we will speak about the DNA evidence because the father was, listen, uh, John Jack Shoewalker, after this happened, he went back home because they all went on Thanksgiving break. So we went back home. And according to report, you guys, he's in Africa. School is in session. He hasn't got back from Africa yet. So let's finish watching this. I don't want to uh, I don't want to give you guys too much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to help out these areas. It was a 25 mile drive to the first stop and so on and so forth. So all of these listed here cities, based on that path, I gave a time frame of when you should be checking the cameras of, of a good place to start. And it's based on markers and exits off highway I-95. So I went ahead and I listed every single city and what mile marker it would have been and how many miles he started. He had 297 miles to make it to his destination. If your person of interest is John Jack and if he did flee to go to his parents' residence. Now there is rumors that he went to a cabin that his parents had. I can't find that in my investigation, but what I could find is this. And it's at least a starting point because he would have had to stop to get gas. I do believe that unless he had a full tank of gas and his vehicle could make it the 297 miles. Believe it or not, Moscow is really close to the Washington border. And here they would have started out at 1122 King Road. You're making it out of. I don't think Jack had a full tank of gas. It doesn't look like this murder was planned. So if there is no way he would like, all right, let me get a full tank of gas because I'm going to have to stop and go home. This wasn't a premeditated murder, you all. And also, you guys are right. Gutting a deer out won't leave you with that much blood on your camouflage jacket maybe shooting, maybe gutting deers. You get what I'm saying? However, you guys, when you see that much blood on the camp, because I've, I've trucked and I've seen people come in truck stops with blood on their jackets. You know, when somebody like, oh, I was hunting, you just going to take their word for it. Nobody is nobody thinking that, oh, I just killed four people. So they're going to look at it as, oh, he was hunting deer, even though it may look weird. The Moscow area, what I did is I took my cursor and I drug it along and was able to get the mile markers like that. Coming across all these uh, cities and towns, they were appropriately marked with the uh, mile marker and how many miles would have been traveled. Uh, there's White Bird. Very interesting though, come across um, on the way on 95 here. This is uh, New Meadows. This young lady, she has great, she has great videos. She's been analyzing this for three weeks. Salute to all the bloggers that's been doing this. Um, she is definitely great at what she does. So she broke down the fact that because he had an alibi. His alibi was he was headed, he was headed to his uh, mother's house because they had a trip. He was going to Africa. So that was his alibi. And the police quickly released him. And the parents of Kaylee were outraged that they quickly released him. 
They were outraged to the fact that they hired a uh, they. The people who released the food truck footage was not the Idaho Police Department. The people that released the food truck footage footage was Kaylee's parents. And they made a huge mistake releasing that food truck footage. Like, I understand they want justice for their daughter, but they not they not doing it the right way. I understand why people like you need to let the police do their job, because releasing that food truck footage, the police already had that food truck footage. But why would the police tell a the family they got the food truck footage when the family is just media whores? Rightfully so. They want justice for their daughter, but they're not doing it the right way. So what we'll do, let's go over the food truck footage. Because after you look at this food truck footage, you all, it's obvious who killed these four people. In my humble opinion, it's obvious. Look at this. We'll, I won't watch this one, and then we're going to watch another one. This one is important to watch because... um. You can hear, you can hear Maddie, what, what comes out of her mouth. Check this out. Uh, actually, it happens. Kaylee puts her phone away. But... Check this out. Four Jack. murders, 3 a.m., two surviving roommates, one home, no suspects. This is an enhanced audio and video from November 13th, 2022. This video really starts solid. with Maddie turning around and slamming her hands down. You can see right here, Hoodie Guy points. This gets Maddie's attention. She shoves Kaylee. You can tell there's some sort of heated exchange. She puts her head forward, she points, she turns around, she turns her head back real quick. Now notice her hand's gonna go out. The guy in the brown coat says stop, puts his hand out. She puts her hand back out and says this. But, 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 but. She is saying fuck you, you can see the breath come out of her mouth. But. This is too, this is, uh, she says, fuck you. And after that happens, uh, Haley puts her phone away and he, she points again like she's angry. He swipes Look her off. It. He says, eh. Watch. And then they start giggling. They're either talking about something, but they get, she gets closer and they're giggling. They could be making fun of something. The fact that they get closer to one another, they're trying to be quiet. They're saying something they don't want anyone else to hear. So they're probably talking about the people behind them. I actually... They talking about the now watch what Kaylee does with her head right here. She's like, this guy over here is being annoying, like over here. And you can tell they're talking about him right here. Maddie looks over. She looks over right there. Okay, so I all right, we'll we'll look at the footage slow down. I just the only the only interaction that these two people had was Maddie turning around and saying, fuck you. And then she goes over to Kaylee and Kaylee, and she's like, who are you talking about? And Kaylee just kind of gives the head nod like this motherfucker. Like they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about him. Somebody says, uh, Jack Showalker probably didn't even have a passport. Most countries have been closed during COVID so far fetched. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. What you don't know about Jack Showalker is that Jack Showalker has an adopted brother from Africa. What you don't know about Jack Showalker is that Jack Showalker is upper middle class. He has a passport. COVID is over, sir. It's not far fetched because where is he? Class is back in session, you all. But he's nowhere. He's nowhere to be found on that campus. This is what. All right, man. Class is in session. He's no longer back on that campus, but he should be allowed to be on that campus, you guys, due to the fact that he was cleared by authorities. So why isn't he back in school? And why is he allegedly still in Africa? We are going to, as we look over this footage, I'm going to mute the audio. And as we look over this footage, you guys, I want to, I'm going to talk through it. Because the audio, we heard the most important thing. The most important thing was, Fuck you. The most important thing was fuck you. I got, let me pull out this evidence. I'm going to pull out the evidence because I got evidence. I got proof as to, well, I shouldn't say proof. I have evidence to back up my theory that he's the actual killer and that he's capable of killing four people. Food truck. Where's this food truck? This was a conspiracy, right? She did it two weeks ago. Okay. Because we pulled, we watched this like yesterday. But they didn't have the um, the clear audio. University Idaho students issue warning. Roommates murder timeline. 
So we got the timelines. We broke the timelines down. Maybe this was three weeks ago. Give me one second, y'all. I'm looking for that food truck. I it's it's in one of these videos. I just gotta find that food truck footage. As I'm doing that, y'all do me a solid and uh and hit the like button. Let's get the stream up to 100 likes for a player. Ugh. I might just be able to Google. You know, we did it yesterday, but I don't want to just keep pausing it. Uh, food truck. I'm gonna just Google the food. You know what I'll do? We'll just Google food truck footage. I don't for food truck footage. All right, let's do that. See, they keep stopping and playing it. All right, cool, cool, cool. You know what? I got it on my on my live from yesterday, so we'll play it on my yesterday's live. That way we won't get we won't get flagged. All right. So we got the footage. Conspiracy. All right. Let's play it. All right, here we go. We got it, y'all. We got it. Was A5 revealed? Was SA? Who was SA? Who was SA? All right, so this is the actual food truck footage. Let's pull it up. This is the actual footage. And um, I want to share, we going to react to this footage, you all. There, go, there goes Jack Showwalker in the hoodie. His eyes, he's a hunter, you all. His eyes never left his target. They And they not even paying any attention to this guy. They minding their own business. They drunk. They just left the party. He got kicked out of the club or the bar because he was being too creepy. And now he's outside being creepy again. This is why they kicked him out. You say, if you if you can feel elk address, you can proficiently. Hey, bingo. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. If you, I'm going to read this. Twisted 10 said, if you can feel, dress, an elk, you are proficient at using a knife. A field dressed white-tailed deer every year. Bing. And I'm going to tell you guys, he was proficient at a lot of things. I'm going to pull up this too. So you see, wherever they go, he goes. He's out the camera now. He's out the camera now. She going, she giving her friend, look, she giving her friends hugs. They giving her friends hugs. They having a good time. They just normal, typical college kids getting drunk, enjoying their life. Some of the best years of your life you are. I paused it for a little bit because, look, I just want to pause. This is the, this guy right here is very key in solving his case. He is extremely key in solving this case. And I'm pretty sure they've spoken with this guy already. Let me see. It's still, it's some more things I want to pull up for you all too. Uh, I'm back. So y'all think the one that ran did it. I personally, I think he did it. I should put a poll up. I'm a, I, should, I should have put the dog on poll up. I think Jack did this. I think Jack did this shit, y'all. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys why I think he did it. Because as soon as they left, he he left right with them. Let me see. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to just add it. We are, I play my audio while we're doing it. Welcome back years before. Oh, yep. Uh, so what you want to do is we'll actually uh, do this. <laughs> A uh, pack, 
Pad Caputo, you say that guy stuttered and stammered through the whole press conference. What guy? Are we talking about Jack? Because I heard Jack did an interview. Or are we talking about the guy, uh, the bigger guy who stuttered through the whole press conference? Because I want to, I want to know who was stuttering through the press conference. We covered our Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it for Excellent, you. and then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like you not quite have enough points yet. Oh, that's look, okay. That's you okay. see, um, ten dollars. You see him? You see him? Look at him. He's right there. He never took his eye off these young ladies. I know y'all can see my mouse. You got to look at where his body has been turned for ten minutes. You all. 10 minutes. He's in the cut. I didn't even notice he was right here. Never. He's hunting. Look at this shit. Never freaking left. You all, I'm bouncing all over the place. I want to show you guys something really, really quick because I, before I forget, because I will forget. I know a lot of you all because somebody was telling me they think it's another uh, person involved because how was he able to go in that house and overpower four people with a knife? And I'm like, well, um, Ted Bundy did it. These were college students. Jack Showalker is a professional fucking wrestler. All right. This is Jack. Jack. This is Jack, you all. I didn't know how to work it for a while, but I'm a pro now. This is what he do. So... The only person that stood a chance was this guy, Ethan. Ethan was nothing for him. He whooped Ethan's ass and stabbed him. He was He's a professional wrestler. He's a hunter. And most importantly, he's a killer. You mean if he wrestling with... Why wouldn't he be able to wrestle to four little college women and eat this small ass when he wrestles for a living? This is what he does. He's a college wrestler. He's a college wrestler. He does this for hours. Of course, he can wrestle, wrestle with somebody. He has brute strength. This is what he does. Shit, sad, man. That's how he slammed Ethan. He ain't had no problem with Ethan last. He picked Ethan up, slammed him, and stabbed him. And look, you all, we'll analyze this wrestling video because I got I got so much on my mind about this damn case. Kaylee's father is trying her trying his best to ruin this investigation because at the end of the day, Jack can run, but Jack can't hide. The longer Jack stays in Africa, the guiltier he looks. The longer Jack doesn't come out and make a public statement, the guiltier he looks. <laughs> hit the nail on the head he would have had an element of surprise not only was he a wrestler because i'm pretty sure ethan was a wrestler too all these white people do wrestling ufc type of thing but the element of surprise was the hunting night bingo you combine that with adrenaline strength his his heart racing he ready he's hunting he on a kill he want real meat now, you all, we're going to finish replaying this. I, like I said, I wanted to show you all this. 
that's weird. We'll watch this. I gotta go over. I want to show you guys. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this Negro. Look at this shit. I'm going to be honest. I don't think Jack was high. I don't think Jack was high. I mean, he could have been how you are. I don't think Jack was high. I think Jack literally was high off adrenaline, and he knew he was about to get his first kill. Jack been wanting to kill for a very, very long time, you are. And he fits the description of a serial killer. He fits the description. Allegedly, you all. Like I say, this is my opinion. I think he did it. Uh, we don't know much at all. And the police need and need to answer questions from the people. The po uh, look, the police don't got to answer no questions from the people, you all, because the more questions that they answer, it muddies up the investigation. Now, I'm going to give you all another hint as to why Jack asses. If Jack did this, he's 100% going down. That's why they're so confident in not giving you guys answers, anything like that. If he did it, he's 100% going down. Now, look, uh, we'll, I want to watch that, and I have to. Um, I got to find this video of the food truck, because I want to show you guys the full footage without me stopping this, like starting and stopping it. Because what I'm about to show you guys is important with this footage. We already showed you all uh, Madison, Idaho 4, Father Clears Up, Third Floor Rumors, Hooded Man Fled to Africa. Is that my? Yeah, that's my title. We already spoke about the um, the interaction, and that was the, the, the fuck you interaction. So now we have to look at the actual body language of this guy again. And I also want you guys to see him, how quickly he left as soon as they left. Y'all, hey, we're closing in on an hour. We got 70 people in the chat today, and we normally don't do this. I appreciate the 70 people in the building. Everybody take a second. Let's see. I want to see if we can get the stream up to 100. Like I say, I know we don't normally cover this. Let's see if we can get the stream up to 100. Everybody take a second and hit that like button. Let's get 100 likes in the building. Let's see if we can push this thing through the algorithm. I want to let me find this conspiracy because she had the full uh, video. I don't know if it was live. Was it? Did she do a live? No, she didn't do a live. She did the videos. Let me look at the young lady's videos. Give me one second, y'all. Like I said, keep, I will not disappoint y'all. Good things come to those who wait. So do me a solid. Like I say, keep smashing that like button. Get this video out in the algorithm. Taxi drivers, you all. This town has been so shooken up that the taxi drivers won't even drive at, after a certain time. They say we're not driving at night because a killer is on the loose. And salute to this salute to this community for being so proactive. They haven't seen a murder, you all, in literally over seven years. So they go from only seeing one murder in the past seven years to seeing four. So, I mean, this is this is pretty. It's hard. It's, it's heartbreaking. Third, a third Jack. It's three Jacks. Ethan Chapman's parents speak out. The Gonzalez sisters speak out. Uh, Madison, here we go. Here goes the food truck video. Let's watch this food truck video one more time. It's very important that we watch this. Let me see. Share this. Shed it. All right. Food truck. Let's share this shit. Because what he does at the end, the whole interaction is creepy, you all. So we'll re, I'm going to rewatch this. We ain't got to watch it to the, uh, let me see. Bingo. It's scarier when it's a small town because there's only 25,000 people, which means everybody know who did it. But they don't know who did it. They like, damn, I could, I could walk right past this person and he can kill me. that I noticed on screen with tech. Oh, yep. Uh, so what you want to do is we'll actually uh, do this. <laughs> so, you know, Thank you. Absolutely. 
Yeah. How many more do you need? Uh, That's the second one? Awesome. Don's mom. Oh, wait. Yeah, one more. One more. Maybe here. I didn't have a suit. It's right here. Look at him. Um, and then what was the next uh, Don't forget to remove the spoon. Carbonara. The carbonara. Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it for Excellent. you. Excellent. And then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like he's not quite having enough points yet. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Notice how he stood in line for the entire 10 minutes and never once ordered food. Never once did he order food. And every time they moved, he moved. And but his last final move is the most shocking move. This is why his last yeah, move let him believe he did it. Pen go, guys. Where's my pen? How are you guys doing? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I seem to have lost my pen, but that's fine. Uh, what can I get for you? Can I get just two dogs? Yeah. Definitely. I get uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Oh yeah. Uh, how many pork tacos? Well, you know what? Just, come with one. Uh, it's one, but they're like six to seven ounce tacos. They're not, they're not like small little street tacos. I normally eat two, three is a lot for me. So one would be fine if I'm getting. Man, I hate when I do that. I heard AZ said uh, that that's also the disadvantage of a small town. Probably don't have cameras everywhere. It's a pro and it's a con to being in a small town. I want to react to that. Um, the witness, the crime scene was not tampered with. The crime scene is actually, it's been under 24 hour surveillance. Um, the amount of blood that was at this crime scene, there's DNA everywhere. Sorry, the volume got cut, y'all. It's DNA everywhere. It's DNA everywhere. The difference between uh, Ted Bundy case and this case, because like I say, this case reminded me a lot of Ted Bundy. That's why I covered it. Ted Bundy went into a dorm, a dorm room and killed six sorority girls all blonde hair blue eyes like he had a type of woman that he wanted to kill ted buddy was able to get away with that murder because there was no dna evidence back in the day now you all we have dna evidence we have dna evidence and i want to pause this real quick because we have to talk about this point of the video they have the they have dna evidence you know um, they didn't take his DNA evidence. That's the problem that the family has. The, the family has a problem because the family feels as though the police should have took his DNA when they questioned him. But I'm going to tell the family is ruining the investigation. I'm going to tell you guys why. Trust me, it's a method to this. Uh, Chris, I found you on IG. I sent you a video. Check it out. I'm gonna check it out right now. Thank you for thank you for sending me an IG video because I'd be needing them. Um, you all don't hear no volume. Can you all hear it? Oh, I paused the video. I paused the video. I paused it. I paused the video, uh, Giovanni, because I wanted to tell you all that. Um, this case, everybody is being so hard on the Moscow Police Department because they feel like they're not being proactive. The police department said this case will not go cold. This was a brutal stabbing, you all. And Kaylee showed signs of struggle, which means if Kaylee shows signs of struggle, her fingernails, she scratched the, she scratched the, the killer. Her DNA, his DNA is under someone's fingernails. Whether it's Ethan's, because Ethan definitely didn't go out without a fight unless Ethan got killed in his sleep. Ethan could have got killed in his sleep. However, you all, 
there, according to the autopsy report, Kaylee showed signs of struggle. All right. So if the, which means we have DNA. They got the DNA. They know who they know who did it. You all we will finish playing this. OK, I got to read. I got to backtrack because this is the part where the video gets interesting at. Now, look, I, I ain't going to replay it all all again. Keep in mind, if you notice at the beginning of the video. This is him at the food truck, right? He he gets close and look how far away he is. As time goes on, because he's stalking and he's stalking his prey out. He gets closer. He gets closer. Look how close he is. He gets closer. Look how close he is. Never once did he order food, you all. He gets closer and he gets so close. This is how close he gets. This is why I want you guys to pay attention. And this is why the guy in the green hat is so important. Look how close he gets. He just enjoying himself. He drunk. He having a good time. But his spidey senses start tingling and he instantly turn around. The fuck is up with this guy? Look at him. Look at look at his body. Look how he wipes his mouth. You got to look at everything. Look at the look how the fat guy wipes his mouth. He turns around. Look, he turned around because he's been keeping his owl dude all day. He instantly, he look at him, look what he do. Wipe his nose. The fuck going on with this shit? Excuse my language. Look at him. You see, look. Ah, ah, ah. See, look, because when you, I'm, look, when you hunting, keep in mind, Jack is hunting. When you're hunting, your senses are heightened. As soon as this guy turns around, you all, and notices Jack, what does Jack do? Look at what Jack does. As soon as the guy turns around, look what Jack does. Jack puts his head down and looks at his phone. He turns away because he noticed the guy's looking at him and he walks away. And look what the guy does. He's trying to figure out what Jack looking at. Y'all don't see this shit. Jack ass is going down. Jack is going down. He turned around. What the fuck is up with this dude? He think I've been paying attention to him this whole five minutes. These my homies. The long hair is mad. That's that's Madison. He like, what is this guy looking at? The guy Jack is hunting. His senses are heightened. So Jack is paying attention to his, all of his surroundings. He didn't think the fat guy was paying attention to his surroundings because the fat guy is making it seem like he's not paying attention to shit. But the fat guy want to know what is what is Jack looking at? Look at him. Look at the fat guy. Look, his body is, is facing directly towards Jack. He got his eye on Jack. He has his eye on Jack. He talking. He trying to play it cool, but he knows something's up. And read, look. Let me let me paint this picture for you all. He Jack previously got kicked out of that bar for being creepy with women. He was groping or doing something weird with women, so they kicked him out the bar. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy in the uh, in the in that green hat seen what he was doing. Hold on, I'm a look. He turned back around. He turns back away. You see it every time. Every time the fat guy looks at him, Jack instantly gets nervous and starts looking around. Look at him. He don't want to make eye contact. Looking around. Looking around. Man, I'm cold with this shit. Y'all can't tell me he ain't do it. That fat guy spoke out. Oh, the fat guy. Okay, look, the fat guy spoke out. All right, we gonna we gonna get. All right, salute to my moderators, man. Salute to my moderators. Salute to the salute to the sisters out here too. We gonna get. Look, we gonna get back to the regular scheduled programming. I wanted. We have to close out this live. We got some other stuff that we are gonna talk about as well. But I have to talk about the Idaho for you all. I I personally can't relate to this because I remember these drunken nights on these college dorms. Anything, anything can happen. Any freaking thing. Uh, Harley, I don't think you got my right IG. Make sure it's just Chris126 because I don't see any messages. Look, you see? Hold on. Let me concentrate. He's trying to throw off all the attention from him. 
The fat guy goes and like, let me see what's to this nigga. Let me see what's to this guy. Let me see what's to this motherfucker. He walk up to him because he's suspicious of him. And Jack is nervous. Look, Jack waving his hands. Jack waving a red flag because, look, even though Jack's a wrestler, you all, Jack is a wrestler. We know Jack's a wrestler. But what we do know about wrestling is Jack is not stupid. Jack understands that he has a weight class that he has to stay in. And there's no way. See, Jack is a predator. It's no way that Jack being this small will be able to overpower the bigger guy. I know I'm bouncing around with the videos and the slabs, but y'all got to just keep up. He knew he wasn't going to be able to overpower that big motherfucker. And that big dude know he wasn't either. That's why he was using his weight to intimidate him. As soon as he walks up to Jack, Jack raises his hands up. Like the fat guy, the police. Look at him. He take his hands out of his pocket. He laughs. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I ain't do nothing. I ain't trying to kill no white girls. Look, no, nah, I ain't got nothing to do with me. We just joking. She said, fuck you. Why is you bothering my friend? She say, fuck off. Now he trying to be all cool. Look, and now he trying to take the attention off him. Why you only got a tank top on? It's winter. Oh, you cold, man. You cold. Y'all don't see this shit. Y'all don't see this shit. Who, uh, make sure you guys send in the, uh, the videos to the right IG. It's just Chris Barnes 126. Because somebody said, y'all, I'm looking for it and I don't see it. Yeah, the big guy, Joe. He was literally steamrolled. Now he looked. The big guy like, what's up with you? Let me look. He pushing him. He look, you see him? He like, all right, keep playing. This, this is not a push of endearment, you all. This is a get the fuck on push. Smacking him. Get the fuck on, man. We don't know you. I ain't trying to kill a white girl. Right. I ain't trying to kill no. He went over there. Look at him. Look how he rose his hand up. I ain't trying to kill no white girls. Look, what, what you looking at? He ain't looking at the fool. We'll be, I'll be, we'll, we'll fast forward. It. Look, I ain't trying to kill no. Look, look, brother. I ain't trying to kill no white girls tonight. He moves closer. Hands up. Don't shoot. I'm not trying to kill Becky tonight. Not at all. He's he guilty, man. He freaking guilty. It's one last part of this video that I got to play. And it, I'm telling y'all, it's no. The police know what's going on. The parents, Kaylee's parents need to shut up. If anybody know Kaylee's parents, tell them to be quiet and let the police do their job. But let your daughter will never get justice. Somebody drop, just drop the information in the chat. And in my, wait, hold on. You say somebody did. Hold on one second. Somebody just dropped what? DM Chris. Okay. I checked the DM. Hey, if anybody trying to send information, let them send the info because it's important. You say uh, we all know by now he's he's a slimy murderer, clear as day, and his demeanor is a whole lot. 10, 15 minutes of the video is perfectly clear. Delete, delete his FB. And his mother is now hiding her FB since yesterday. See, I didn't know that. So he deleted because I was trying to look for his Facebook. I was trying to look for his Instagram. He's nowhere on social media. And why is, why is the mother hiding her Facebook? Why is the mother hiding a killer? Salute to the mods. Salute to all my moderators. Salute to the mods. Y'all know I love my mods. Why is, why is the mother hiding a killer? And this is my thing. I'm going to tell y'all something because they say he has an adopted brother in Africa. If Africa was so great, why did they have to adopt an African child and bring him over to America? If Africa was that great, then an African child would be still in Africa. So why, are you, why is your white ass in Africa? Why is your white ass in Africa? We going we gonna to react to the uh, the fat guy did an interview. I got it. We going to react to the fat guy's interview. I don't know his name, y'all, so I just got to call him the fat guy. All right, people call me the skinny guy all the time. It is what it is. It's one part of this video I got to play. It's a lot of key things that you all look. He's still, it's like he's talking to the fat guy, but he still can't keep his eyes off these two white chicks. And normally when you're having a conversation, you are conversing with someone. You make eye contact with them. You're really intrigued. His body, literally, look at him. Fuck you. 
Fuck you. That's what she said. It. She cursed at him three times and pointed at him. Stop following me. Fuck you. Stop following me. My friend over there talking. Why are you bothering me? Fuck you. It's a good thing to end it, but you heard. Just... Fuck you. Love it. How close are we to you sitting down on night Friday nights? I mean, that was a solid rush. It's a good thing to end it, but. Fuck you. This is, two, this is uh, Friday and Saturday in a row. They got you down round one. So I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, guys. <laughs> why are you, why are you even talking to these women? And you, when you talking to a man right now, why are you worried about what women are doing at a food truck? She right. And uh, Giovanni, the police, I wouldn't be happy with the father either. He talked about hiring private investigators, having a reward. Like, you not trying to catch no criminal, bro, because you're not doing it right. He grieving, and I understand why he grieving, but somebody needs to tell him to be quiet. Just please shut up and let these... The FBI is there. If the Idaho police can't handle it, the FBI is there. If you all seen that crime scene, I'm not showing that crime scene. It's too gruesome. It's DNA everywhere. The person who did this, they didn't think this out. It wasn't planned. It wasn't premeditated. They had a sick instinct or a sick thing. They wanted to kill. Jack wanted to kill that night. Jack has been wanting to kill for years now. This is why Jack is a hunter. This is why Jack wrestles. This is why Jack exhibits antisocial behaviors. This is why Jack got kicked out of his fraternity. This is why Jack got kicked out the bar. Because he wanted to kill. This is why Jack drove five hours to his parents' cabin and never came back to class after the Thanksgiving holiday because Jack is a killer. Jack's parents are doctors in Africa. This may... They wanted them South African. I get it. I get it. Exactly. They doctors in Africa. These are rich people, you all. And it don't matter about... At the end of the day, y'all, class, right is right and wrong is wrong. She took a picture of Jack ass. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It don't matter if they rich or not. They don't deserve to die, man. I want to show y'all this one last clip, you all. Salute to Danny uh, McWells for the new sub. I appreciate I appreciate the new sub. I thank you. I, I definitely do. Uh, his mother, Kelly, has a, mo has a motive. You say his mother, Kelly, has a motive, but not a, not a very morale motive. Apparently, the reason why Moscow PD don't chase him fast because his family has quite a chunk of money. And one attorney general, apparent. Ooh, if his parents are doctors in South Africa, that means they rich as hell. They over there uh, giving out those freaking polio vaccines to little black kids. Like they got that type of money, which leads me to believe that Jack does have a plug with the attorney general. That's why they can't arrest him. That's why they let him go. Salute to Ann A. Salute to Ann A for the new subscribe for the new sub. I appreciate that. Oh, wait, the most important part of the video. See the salute to y'all, man. Look, this is where it gets interesting at. As soon as the fat guy turns his back, watch this. He he's intrigued in the conversation. He's comfortable because everybody get comfortable. Now, look, the lady's comfortable now. He's comfortable. The fat guy comfortable. Everybody comfortable. He got him exactly where he want to get him. This ain't trust me. He comes from a rich family. He's smart. They shaking hands. He done made a new friend. They getting their phones. They taking pictures, right? This is why I truly believe. Look, look, watch this. Watch this. They walk off. They get their tacos, right? He look, where they go? Where the fuck y'all going? The fat guy walk off. He look, oh, the fat guy gone. It's time to go. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop it. Never got no food, y'all. Never got no damn food. Never got no food. Salute to Ann. And salute, for real. Welcome. I want everybody in the chat to welcome the new subscribers. Never got no food. The re I'm going to tell y'all something. The reason why the Idaho Police Department didn't take any DNA evidence is because they don't need to take any DNA evidence. The DNA is all in the crime scene. And for all we know, Jack could have been in the interrogation room sipping a cup of coffee. And if he sipped a cup of coffee, you know what's on that cup? His damn DNA. 
the Moscow Police Department said this case is not going cold. It's only been three weeks, you all. The case will get solved. Jack, as soon as Jack bring his ass back to Moscow, Idaho, and they got enough evidence to bring in a warrant, they're going to do a mouth swab. And when they do that mouth swab, they're going to compare his DNA to the DNA under the fingernails of Kaylee. What's Kaylee's last name, y'all? Forgive me. Kaylee freaking, somebody help me, Kaylee Convalis. Because she was the one who put up the fight. They're going to find his blood underneath her fingernails. And they're going to ask him, yeah, we know you rich. Yeah, we know your parents are doctors in Africa. Yes, we know you know an attorney general. But what we want to know is, why in the hell is this girl's DNA, why is, it, why is your DNA under a dead girl's nails? The police, you say, you say, I feel the police department is covering for some folks. If you know what, the police could be covering for some folks. And like I said, if you all sent me, a, uh, I know somebody said they sent me information. If you sent me information, send it to just Chris Barnes 126. The same picture that I got on uh, my YouTube is the same picture on my Instagram. So send me that info. And salute to Sikkim, dog. Look, I'm a Sikkim today. I'm a sick him today. I'm look, I'm on, I'm on Jack ass. No point intended. We're gonna sick him today. I appreciate the five dollar super chat, brother. Man, I definitely do. Let's go over the uh it's speculation. Look, y'all. At this point, we're speculating. I'm speculating. I'm speculating off what I see. I didn't talk to any police department. I don't have any hardcore evidence. I'm just looking at what he did. It was creepy. Like his goal was them. And this goes back to what the father said. I feel as though they were targeted. He was targeting them for 12 minutes at that taco stand. As soon as they left, he left. I already proved to you guys that he has the power to overpower three college girls and eat them because he's a wrestler. He's a hunter. Now, look, oh, you know, golly, hold on. I'm going to play this interview for you guys. Hopefully, it's under 30 minutes. I didn't even realize I was talking this long. All right, I'm going to play the interview with the, uh, the Idaho murders, the hat guy. The Grubhub truck speaks out. This is the full video. So uh, we're going to listen to what the guy said about the uh, the food truck incident. Let me see some Idaho murders. Let's listen to this interview because it's my first time hearing hearing him actually speak. Hey, Joe here. I just wanted to jump on this and make a video real quick. <laughs> kind of just squash some stuff that I've been seeing. So um, first and foremost, I feel super awkward that I even have to make this video. But I've been, like, not really keeping track of all of the stuff that's going on with this investigation for those girls that were, that were killed. And um, to start off, um, like, the very next day when they had announced the murders and, um, and when they had shown the photos, as soon as I saw the photos, I messaged the two people that were in that video that I was talking to. Um, my neighbor and then another guy that we had met earlier that night who I thought was really cool. Um, and we invited him to come with us to grub bus. Um, and I was like, Hey, weren't two of these girls at the grub bus with us last night? And they couldn't remember, but, um, they were also very drunk and I was not. So, um, I thank you, Giovanna and somebody thinking. They did not want this grub hub, this, this food truck video to be released because Jack saw this and he's not coming back. Jack ain't been back to class since his footage got released. And Kaylee's parents released this footage. So this is why the, I don't personally, I don't think they're covering it up. I think they're trying to keep everything closed so they can get his ass back and charge him. I did have there's a drink called money. the Larry Craig. That's like a really popular drink over here. I did have one of those at um, Corner Club, but I mean, other than that, I was 
I was totally sober. When they confirmed that those were the girls, um, the only reason I knew that it was those girls was because I saw the video said, oh, they were seen at this thing. Because I actually called the police right away and was like, hey, I just have, I think I might have information. Um, I just need to know like what was one of the girls wearing. Cause I remember one of them had like pink because the one that bumped up, bumped into me at corner club was wearing pink, but nobody called me back from the police. And I was like, okay, they're probably just swamped with information, probably whatever. But then when the video came out and people were like, no, those were the girls. And those two people were like, dude, those were the girls. I was like, okay, I'm going to physically go to the police station and talk to the police. I told the police everything I saw, um, which is different than what I think is going out there right now. And I'm, you know, I was just waiting for food. I'm just like everybody else in town that waits for food at the grub bus. It does take a while. Um, everybody goes there. And so that was kind of the thing. It was like, no, we got to, if you're ending the night, you end it at grub bus. But other than that, I don't really have any like crazy information. I don't know why everybody's reaching out to me. I don't know why so many people are trying to spin things around. And so what I've decided to do is that I'm only commenting on things that are like ridiculous. So try and give clarity, but man, people are really turning this into something. It's not, um, yeah. So I want to address a few things specifically. One being the news article that came out was the first person that I actually like talked to. All right, we go. We go finish watching this. My question to him is enough about you. We want to know about Jack Negro. What were you and Jack talking about? Like this, we want to know. Um, you said, and I, I want to read this comment because this is very, this is very uh, interesting. One thing I can say is, no matter how drunk I've been, commotion has always woke me up. I don't know how the other two roommates didn't wake up. The the room downstairs is a basement, and I'm gonna be honest. Me personally, I would agree with you. I've slept through Hurricane Cyrus before. So it's possible to sleep through things. I'm a very deep sleeper, you all. Like if, if a murder was going on next next door to me, if I was asleep, I wouldn't know. So like I said, I've slept through Hurricane Cyrus before. So I can see how they can sleep through that. With the news media. A lot of a lot of media outlets have reached out um to me and I've just ignored them because I just was like, man, I'm like, I just was waiting for food. Like, I have nothing to add. I've given all the helpful information I can to the police. It, may, it would make zero sense for me to give any more information to random people. Um, but these... Hey, room he lying. He's lying, y'all. He know, look, he know damn well we want to know about Jack. The police told him, don't speak about this investigation. If you notice, he not talk. He said, I was just there getting food. Rumors that are Bullshit. going around were just, like, crazy. And I... And I didn't have a bad vibe from the guy that people were dragging through the mud. I don't know if he did it or not. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I could speak to the vibe I got from him, which was all people really wanted to know at first anyways. And I thought he was fine. Now, the the news outlet that I talked to, I mean, he really embellished some stuff I said and added his own words to things and kind of changed the verbiage. I wasn't defending anybody. That's one thing he said. Um, I wasn't defending him. I was just saying people need to stop spreading rumors because that could ruin his life. What if he's innocent? It would ruin his life. The other thing he said is that I noticed him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him till I started till I cracked the joke to the frat guys because I thought it was ridiculous that it was like freezing outside and that guy was in a tank top. So I just made a joke because that's how I make friends. I don't know. <laughs> But that's when the guy chimed in and I noticed him. I, I didn't notice him until that moment. Um, when I was at Corner Club, when I said, ew, some people were like, what? that's such a weird thing to say. Why would I? Guys... That's what you say when you're standing talking to friends and somebody really drunk, like they smell drunk, they're like bouncing around and they bump into you and like rub up against you. Like that's what you, it's gross. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but she was really... I mean, you can even see in the grub bus video, she couldn't even, she walked between us several times and just couldn't even stop, walk straight. That girl was very drunk. She's actually the only one that I thought was really drunk. And she was the only one I noticed at 
Couldn't even. Let me tell you all something about hunting. A lion, when a lion is in the jungle and a lion is hunting, and keep in mind his parents are in South Africa, so they hunt. These are hunters. A lion doesn't go for the strongest deer or strongest antelope. It goes for the weakest one. Y'all hear me? He's he's victim blaming. Exactly. He's right now he's victim blaming. It goes a hunter, a predator is going to go after the weakest one. Maddie was the drunkest out of the club. He said that he was like she was so and this is why Jack, her boyfriend, didn't answer the phone. Because one thing we fellas, we all know if your girlfriend call you at two, three in the morning, drunk as hell. You don't want to go over there, but you're like, I gotta go over there because I don't want no other no, I don't want nobody else to go over there. Jack ain't pick up that phone because Jack ain't feel like dealing with Kaylee drunk ass. They were drunk. And it's okay that they were drunk because they were at a bar. They had a college party. I'm saying that to say he is telling the police told him what to say to you all. The police told him what to say because he's not invest and he's not messing up this investigation. He won't justice. She walked between us. Several times and just couldn't even stop, walk straight. That girl was very drunk. She's actually the only one that I thought was really drunk. And she was the only one I noticed at Corner Club because she had bumped into me. Um, another thing that was weird is that the guy who was interviewing me from the Daily Mail or whatever it was, um, he said glass eyed. And I was like, sure, yeah, like that. I didn't actually even use that word, that was his word. And then as far as the car goes, yeah, there was a car that pulled up. I, I couldn't remember what it was. I couldn't remember if it was black, blue, gray. I couldn't remember. I just remember that a car pulled up. So, yeah. So I didn't know what color the car was. It was dark. And I just felt like when I told the guy, I said it was a dark car. I couldn't remember what color it was. And I think when I was at the police station, Bingo, don't go to a bar if you don't want to be able to be around drunk girls. He said he was sober and he was like, this girl was just so drunk. He was annoyed. But you went to a bar. I couldn't remember what color it was. They asked me to. And um, yeah, so but the Daily Mail guy was like, no, you need to like, was it blue? Was it black? I was like, I, I can't remember if it was blue or black. I can't remember. He's like, well, we'll just say dark colored car. And I was like, OK, I was like, I think it was a four door sedan. But this guy got out. And was like, hey, let's go. Let's, what, what's going on? Because the girls were making videos and laughing and they were trying to grab all the food. Every time food was coming out from the grub bus, they were just trying to grab it. <laughs> and um, they thought it was funny. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little funny, but they were, they were trying to grab all the food that was coming out. And um, when I went up and I talked to the guy at the grub bar. It's not funny. You say he went to the bar to play a game of pool. Joe seems like he'll just go to the bar and play a game of pool. Like, but that's what happens. At, I mean, if you go to a pool hall, you get what I'm saying? Like, nobody's mad at Joe. I'm just, I'm not mad at Joe. I, I'm actually, I commend Joe. And the reason why I commend Joe is because he actually tried to intervene. And he's not, in, he's not interfering with the investigation like the family. From my from my knowledge of seeing the video, Joe knows a lot more than he's telling us, but he can't tell us what he knows. I said, did you just give them food? Because he just said, here you go, like that, and gave them food, and then they ran off. I thought, I actually told the grub, I was like, that was really nice of you. He's like, yeah, they just need to, get, you know, they need to get home. And I was like, yeah, they're, yeah. They were trying to climb into the grub bus. So, I mean, very drunk. And then, honestly, as soon as they called my number, that's i mean i told the guy i said they're leaving bro and then because they called my number i all i could think about was pasta i couldn't think about anything else other than just eating macaroni and cheese and and that was it i didn't give any other thoughts i didn't Come think on, anything else about it um yeah some people have said that like i've seen some people say like oh i think it's suspicious how much joe remembers i I'm, and I'm an adult. Like, as soon as I realized that those were the girls that we saw there, I tried my best to remember everything and recount it from that night because I knew that it would help in the investigation. Some people said, oh, Joe might have been a suspect. Dude, I have cameras in my house. I literally have the time I walked in my house. The girls were still alive at that point. And I have a can of soda. Translation. 
my fat ass was there to play a game of pool and I wanted a burrito. I was not there to kill any white women. Joe don't Joe don't strike me as somebody who wants to kill white women. He, Joe don't strike me as somebody who wanted to kill anybody. The only thing Joe wanted, wanted to kill that night was that damn burrito. And he was upset that Haley and Madison was trying to get inside the food truck because they was holding up the line, you all. That's why he remembered them. He's like, I remember these two drunk women. They was holding up the line. I, that I had in my burrito. video, having in my hands, walking, walking into my house. So, yeah, it wasn't me, I promise. And other people were saying that I was excited about like a claim to fame or something like that. What is wrong with you? That's such a disgusting thing to think. Like who would be excited about this? I've literally ignored everybody, like everybody. The only reason I even answered the daily mail guy at first is because he showed up to my friend's house, like physically showed up to my friend's house trying to find me or trying to get information about me. Crazy. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to help, you know, I, a part of me too felt guilty because I was laughing. I kind of laughed at the girls, you know? Salute to the chat. This is why I love the chat. ELT in Japan said something way before Joe actually said it. You say, I think he might feel a bit broken up because he saw the interaction and realized what led to it. As soon as I read that, this is what Joe said. He says he feels guilty because he knew he shouldn't have let I just wanted to help. You know, I a part of me too felt guilty because I was laughing. I kind of laughed at the girls, you know, um, watching them be drunk because i mean let's be honest anybody that lives here the whole reason that the grub bus has a twitch stream is because the people i kind of i call them zombies but just kind of like because the, they're just people come from all walks throughout the night um a lot of drunk people come there after they've finished their night drinking to get load up on carbs eat food um police come there that are working late they come get their food they just park right behind the bus um, people like me come there who just want pasta in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, it's all walks of life, all people. But it makes for an interesting crowd pretty late. And so they always live stream it. That's the reason they live stream it. So that camera footage that you guys are seeing the the that looks like surveillance, it's not surveillance. It's a live stream for Twitch, for the Grub Bus. One thing I did say that um, I'm glad that uh, was reported truthfully. Um, is that, you know, I have, a, I have a little girl and I mean, she's a baby. She's like not even two yet. And she's my world. And, Damn. you know, there's a dad out there that these. Hey, so chat, I, I'm reading the chat. William, William says that, hold on. And Haley agrees. Any look, y'all, I know the chat. Y'all get William flack. Anytime Haley's agreeing, William's, William is saying something. You invited him to your friends. Stop playing. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Is that true? And you say 100. It was a red flag and he felt guilty because I think him and Joe know what's up. I think he's Joe's friend, in my opinion. Hey, chat, let me know if y'all agree with William and Haley or if y'all disagree with him. Let me know if y'all think Joe and Jack are really friends. Girls, that they were the, they're his world, you know, and they're gone. So, and I just felt kind of guilty because. Instead of helping them when they were drunk, I just, they were entertainment. While I was waiting for food, they were just the entertainment. They were just the drunk people that everybody laughs at, you know? And it's sad, and some people think that's disrespectful. I mean, it's, it was what was happening. They were drunk. They were out there drunk like that. And um, one of my toxic traits is that I take on the weight of everything that's going on around me. Um, both personally or just even with friends and stuff. And so any of my friends that know me, they reached out to me pretty much right away. Why are you all doing this to me? I told you all this was my last live. Now you're going to have to, I'm going to have to relook at the footage. You said his body language to me 
just wouldn't stop looking around, but you worried about eating. Damn, you right. He said his main concern was to go and get a get some pasta. But he was looking around, talking to people. His main mission wasn't just pasta. Damn. You yeah. Hey. Because they knew that this was gonna be eating me up. Um, and it and it has. And I haven't been following what people have been saying until just recently. You know, somebody sent me a TikTok video that had the most ridiculous things on it. And I, I tried to set those straight. And apparently it fueled more Reddit BS and more rumors. I don't understand how people are making this into an entertainment thing. Like, I live here. My friends are scared to walk to their cars. I don't, I'm a big guy. And I'm strong. I don't feel super safe going outside alone at night either i just hope people realize that there's real people that are affected by this stuff you know and that sorry i put my head on it's it's, it's really like it's this dude did a five-part tiktok interview uh giovanna said nope just friends some people are saying that um and thinks this is what Anne thinks you are everybody entitled to think not friends just met that night in my humble opinion, it looks like they had just met that night because they wasn't talking the entire time. But like I say, I can be wrong. Y'all can be right and vice versa. You know, I, it don't matter. What we do know is this. He went up and talked to uh, Jack and he knows a lot more than he's telling It's really us. cold. Like there's snow outside. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'm, I feel like there's, people need to stop trying to reach out to me to get statements. There's, so many other people that know more about what's going on than I do. I just happen to be getting macaroni and cheese at the same time as them. And other than like those couple minutes there, I can't really speak to anything else. And people need to stop dragging whoever through the mud, especially if you don't live here and you don't know anybody, you don't know what's going on really. Um, like, this isn't funny, and it's not entertaining. And um, I believe that Moscow Police Department is doing a really good job in trying to kind of just do damage control. But, like, let's be honest, the FBI is, like, on it, you know? I, I would be surprised if they have a really good idea of who, who it is. They're I just keep, waiting for evidence. I know? keep telling you all that FBI is on it. You say, Chris, if me... If me and I, if you and I plan to take someone out and we arrived at the same spot, we ain't going to talk about it either. It's a dead giveaway. I look, I, hey, some people believe that it took more than one person to kill him. So it, it could be a possibility. It's possible that he was a part of this murder. It's possible. He said the FBI know what's going on, y'all. Evidence to just make it concrete, you know, because one of the worst things that I guess is on it. You know, I, I would be surprised if they have a really good idea of who who it is. They're just waiting for evidence, you know, evidence to just make it concrete, you know, because one of the worst things that can happen, you guys, is if they if they catch the murderer and they arrest them, bring them in and then they have weak or or refutable evidence and that person walks. Think about that. You know, so ease up. Don't, don't, don't be jerks to the police. You know, they're literally like, they don't want to give information out because this is like a really tight investigation, but they know things. They know things. I don't understand why they didn't, I will say my one critique. I don't know why they didn't put out right away that a car picked up the girls and was waiting for them in front of the grub bus. It took them way too long to do that. And I, and there was a lot of rumors going around saying that the girls ran away from that guy. They ran across the street. And that's really when I started to like, man, I, I should say something, you know, online. But, you know, I I work in, in media and marketing and I'm a musician and I have a lot of things that I just want to like give the world. He's a musician. And he I'm sad musician. that this is kind of how my name got out there. That makes me really sad. Um I'll probably delete these videos as soon as they announce the murder and it's all over. Um, but until then, please just stop. Today I talked to somebody from Dr. Phil. They were wanting me to 
to go on Dr. Phil and talk about this. And I'm like, why? I like, I don't think people realize how little I actually know. Nigga, you lie. Like, like I've said, I've been pretty much ignoring everybody. I'm not going to talk to any more media. Um, there's actually, let me, let me backtrack that. There's a lady coming to Moscow tomorrow who I'll probably have coffee with, but other than her, that's it. What lady is he speaking to? All right, look, he said something in this video, and I go out. What we have not spoken about is who picked these young ladies up in that black car. We haven't looked into who picked them up in this black car. Some people said it was a ride share service. Some people said it was a taxi. Now, personally, I don't, whoever picked these people up in the car, I don't think they killed them. I still think Jack followed them and trailed them and knew where they lived and killed them. That's just what I believe. Like I say, my opinion at the end, I'll be all. John Jack told Joe he was making sure the girls got home. They were killed not long after the food truck. John Jack had to have gone over there. The food truck wasn't their home. Oh, my gosh. You can't respect this chat and others' opinion will be time. Y'all, look. um, Bitch, I don't need time out. Willpower, don't leave, all right? Just respect people and don't leave. I want everybody here just chill, all right? We got to figure out who drove. And the, the FBI and the police know this, y'all. They know who did it. They not stupid. They just, they waiting to get concrete evidence. Because the people that they plan with, they not from old block or 63rd. These people got money. They got lawyers. They know attorney generals. They know politicians. So you have to have irrefutable evidence to arrest jackass. Jack will be going to jail shortly. If Jack ain't going to jail, I'll make a public apology to Jack. I truly feel like Jack did this shit. He's a wrestler. He's a hunter. He was creeping on these people for the past for 10. He was creeping on these two young women. For 12 to 15 minutes, the fat guy Joe did an interview. He's covering up what he knows because the FBI said, don't say a word. We know Joe is lying. Joe said his main goal was to go get food. Joe's main goal was not to get food because Joe wasn't even waiting in the line like everybody else. Joe got in that line later. Jack was in line before Joe. Seriously. They got it. They're going to check the girl's fingernails as soon as they get that thing. It's so much blood, you guys. I'm going to tell you all. This is what they're saying. They got to they got to differentiate the blood samples from the knife. They got to differentiate the blood samples from Ethan and Kaylee. And they got to uh, differentiate the blood samples from Madison and Kylie. Anna, excuse me, is it Anna? They got they all the blood is mixed up. So what they're going to do is they're going to find out whose blood belongs to Anna. Whose blood belongs to Kaylee? Whose blood belongs to Madison? And whose blood belongs to Ethan? Now, you guys, they are only supposed to have five different blood samples at that crime scene. Four, excuse me, four different blood samples at that crime scene. All they need is a fifth different blood sample. Once they test that fifth different blood sample and they look at Jack's cup or Jack's cigarette or Jack's handprint or Jack sneezed. Jack drank out that coffee cup at that police station. They going to test this. And if his DNA matches the blood DNA from under Kaylee's nails, he's going to jail. It don't matter who he know. It don't matter how much money his parents have. If he did this, he's getting locked up. Look, I apologize for ending the live abruptly. Y'all know I wear many hats over here. I got to keep it trucking. If you guys liked the video, please get this video up to 126 like. likes. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share the video. Like the video. Do all that good stuff, y'all. I love y'all. I mean that. We do have more. Look, we got the Shanquilla Robinson situation to talk about. More people will be arrested in the, in the takeoff case. For some reason, I am intrigued with this Idaho 4, but we got another situation we're going to bring up, y'all. I, I know I'm fucking the algorithm up, but at the end of the day, y'all, this is what I like talking about. So we're going to get it right. Like the video, subscribe, share to the channel. I appreciate my new members. I appreciate my new subscribers, and I appreciate everybody. I right, salute to the moderators. Peace and love to y'all. I got to get in the truck. I'm out.